<laughs> yeah, I've just spent 30 minutes um, trying to think about that. Um, no, it's heartbreaking. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, you know, I don't feel like we certainly lost that game on heart, that's for sure. Um, we lost it in moments. Um, and we probably didn't take all the ones we needed um, to be able to get the job done. So it um, shows you what a fingertip does in for you, doesn't it? Um, just how close it is and how the closer competition is. And um, But the ability to be able to stay present, play, you know, um, you know, just fight right to the end. I just felt like it was an um, exceptional effort from the group to be able to do that. Um, you know, I asked the group two weeks ago, and you heard me speak in this press conference about how we'll find out a little bit about ourselves over the next um, couple of couple of weeks. I think we found out a bit. I think we found out a lot, a lot to like, a lot to like in our kids um, that came in and brought the spirit that they needed to. Um, found out a little bit more about our leaders and how they're able to reset and reframe and um, you know get after it. Um, you know, and uh, and also the fight that we got within the group. The facts are we've left. We shouldn't have been in that position in the first place, but that's. Um, but I, I'm, I'm pleased with the with the response that we got, and obviously because of that, it makes it really heartbreaking. Yeah. Obviously, you use that word heartbreaking a couple of times there, but is it still a strange emotion because you know it might not matter if you know if, if Port Adelaide wins, you you're in the same spot, you're playing finals, like, is it, or, or is it? Or do you still feel like? No, the game. And I think I've, I sort of right now I sit with the game, and and the manner and the way the game's played. I mean, I understand that there's a bigger picture. Um, at play, and that's um, probably not necessarily how you want to um, play out the last game, um, knowing what the the outcome is likely to be or not likely to be. Um, that's probably why at the moment it's hard to sort of sit here and reflect on anything throughout the season because you know season right now, um, as I sit here, is still alive, and um, and uh, so the time for reflection is not now. Um, it, it might be in about four hours, um, but it's not right now. Brody, did the guys, is he down on himself? Did the guys have to get around him to... No, I think the up? guys, I mean, that's, you know, part of great teams is we're in a locker room, we um, we do it together and, um, you know, and that's what that's what we've prided ourselves on a, as a footy club and as a footy team. And, um, you know, like tonight, I thought our supporters were unbelievable tonight. Like, they're just the energy and um, in that stadium was just something else. And... Uh, they were they were parochial as I've ever seen them, and um, and riding every kick uh, right to the end, and um, so you know just pass on our thanks, our gratitude to our supporters for being able to provide that level of energy and try and pick the boys up and keep them going. And um, there'll be some special moments that some of our boys will remember. I'm sure Ashen kicking that goal on the left foot and hearing the noise um, will be something that he'll remember for for the rest of his lifetime. But um, you know, we're extremely grateful for the supporter base we've got. Um, we know that they're extremely passionate. Um, I'm sure they're, um, it's heartbreak for them as well. Um, we feel that emotion and we feel it together. And um, But again, I'll go back to, to the performance itself. I just felt like we just put it all out there and we've come up short and that's what a competitor has to do. Sometimes you've got to put it out there and sometimes you come up short. The fans were pretty fired up about the umpires. I think the free kick count was 12-1 at one stage. Do you think you'll have to have another chat to the umpires during the week like you did a few months ago or how do you sort of say it? Well, a bit pointless doing that. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I don't... I tend to look at that too much, to be honest with you. It's, um, you know, the, the moments that we had, we needed to be able to take and uh, I don't shift that to somewhere else. I don't shift that to who was not there I shifted in um, that we had opportunities and we generated those opportunities. Um, but you know, a sign of a you know a very good side is that you convert them, and um, we put ourselves in the position. So can't fault that. Um, but you also got to finish it, and we couldn't do it. Just on that topic of the, the free kick, something you obviously won't be aware of it, but there was an incident in the crowd where a, a fan is with obviously frustrated at the way the free kicks were going and has thrown and, and connected yeah. with a with a goal umpire. Yeah, we don't we don't. We don't tolerate that. That's um, yeah. That's not what it's about. It's not what footy's about. Um, you know, we we spend a lot of time around trying to inspire and bring joy, and we want families at our at our football club, and we want um, we want to create that real safe environment. And uh, and I reckon we do that really well, and we'll continue to enforce um, to reinforce that. And uh, we couldn't quite bring the total amount of joy that we needed to today. And when you hear instances like that. You know, obviously, clearly, that's something that hopefully the AFL follow up pretty strongly. I know our club will. 
Um, I've only heard about it. I didn't see it, but um, but yeah, I'm sure we'll follow that pretty strongly as it should be. Bossy, can you give us an insight into how you address the players after the game, and are you guys going to get together later to watch the uh, Dockers poker? I'm sure at some stage the boys will gather themselves and do something. Um, I didn't get locked in on that conversation, to be honest with you. Uh, no, sometimes you just got to, you know, sometimes, you know, it's just been each other's presence and, um, you know, and that's, that's effectively what the locker room was like. It was, um, you know, we got all together. Um, all the boys that didn't play came in. Um, our football staff came in and, um, you know, not much could really be said because there's not really much to share other than sort of sit in the disappointment right now. Um, and hopefully... Um, there's a different feeling in a few hours' time. How are you going to be barracking for Port? Yeah, I did. About as funny as I get uh, today is um, I'll have to drag out that Port Adelaide never tear as a part scarf and uh, <laughs> and put it around the shoulders. So um, I hope Kenny can get the job done there. But um, I wish we weren't in the position where we're handing that fate to, to somebody else to, to do the job for us. But, uh, but we are, so... Um, yeah, I hope Paul can get the job done. It, it is obviously an awkward situation right now, but if, if you do manage to get through, are you confident of what you can achieve given how many players could come back for that first week if you're, if you're lucky enough to get there? Oh, I am. Um, I, I spent a, bit, a little bit of time on the magnet board, um, not just looking at what we have, but also uh, you know what, what finals might look like. I mean, that's what you have to do, but at the same time, I'd... I'll probably wait till a little while longer. Sorry to say that again and again, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll shift focus if that happens that way. But uh, the game itself, I, I think that's important. To actually, understand it's just more that the way the game was, um, you know, the way we finished out the season. Um, but there's a moment. There'll be a moment when we look back on the season and say that this thing takes 23 weeks to get done, and that's the reality. And you've heard me talk about consistency of performance, and um, and that is that is something that we're still. We're still chasing excellence as a footy club. We have made massive inroads into those areas um, to be that team and to be that club. Um, and we continue to go after it at the right time. Just unfortunately, don't, you know, the injuries, the, the umpires, the, how the season's gone, it's just, it's just not a conversation for now. That's all. If we play the hypothetical game, though, who would be back in two weeks' time? Ah, oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll have to let you keep playing the hypothetical at the moment, so. Are there um, any obvious ones though? Like the, yeah, the big boys, yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah. Kerno and, and Mackay yeah. would, would be certain yeah. decent. Yeah. I'll, I'll go there later. <laughs> to Sorry, guys. It's just like, it's just, you know, if you're, you're feeling a little bit strange with it, um, it certainly feels that way up here. Well, see, if it is to be at the end of your season, is it is it a bit of a failed season given you guys went into the season with such high expectations and it feels like you've been building and you sort of plateaued a little bit now? Can I hold on that one? Yeah. Can I hold on that one? Um, it's a great question to ask, but I just I, I just think I've got to hold on that one. Yeah. yeah. Today you obviously had um, stoppage and territory domination. Was it? I know there are many factors that go into the result, but not having Kuno and Mackay up there to finish off that. I mean, obviously Kemp and the, those other guys tried the hardest, but just to have those real two got twin towers to finish off that work was that a, a factor in today's result as well? Do you reckon? Uh, well, the efficiency going inside fifth though is always going to be hard. Mm. Um, but uh, again, like sort of the. The way our, te our, our team is evolving and you sort of feel like, well, okay, you're, you're an unfinished product. We're still finding out about ourselves. Um, and then all of a sudden, sort of, Brody Kemp goes from forward to, um, to from back to forward and um, had his hands full for, yeah, most of the first half, so did Matty Kennedy. Um, so it's not necessarily been their primary position, but geez, I'm proud of them. Um, what, the, what they're able to do this week and last week, um, to sort of keep playing through disappointment and it was always just going to be about opportunity. That's all it was going to be about. It wasn't going to be about a weight of numbers. It wasn't going to be about, um, you know, kicking a big score. It was about accepting a loss and moving on really, really quickly. And, you know, obviously St Kilda already have a, a trait of being able to defend very, very well. And they've got some great interceptors down back. So it was always going to be tough. But they just stuck at it. And I just thought it was a really impressive um, way to go about it from our forwards. I mean, from the whole team, but... They just seemed to get energised from anything that went in the in the forward half, and they just stayed totally present through the disappointment. And as a result of that, um, the game didn't completely go their way, but they just stayed present. They stayed playing the next play. They kept playing the next moment, and we put ourselves in a position to to, to snatch the game. Um, so there's just a lot to like about that. Whether that's Ashton coming in for for moments, um, and that's probably where he's at the moment. He's probably playing moments. You know, he's not 
necessarily built for the for the four quarters just yet. Um, but you've seen what he's been able to do the last couple of bits, and um, having Corey Durden back and sort of seeing what he's been able to do over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, geez, we missed him, you know, over the course of the year. So we're building this team, and uh, it might take a little bit longer than we want, um, but it's in the right direction, and that is what I'm really really confident of. So um, we've talked about, you know, we're not we're not just talent based. You need talent to win, but there's still system and effort. And um, we showed that through effort, we can make our system work. Um, and buying into each other, we can make that system work. And um, so that's what I've been really impressed with the last couple of times. So yes, Harry and Charlie make a difference. Clearly they do, they're cold and medalists. Um, but our approach and our attitude, and, um, and we found a couple of things. Um, so there's something to walk away with there. With those themes you're talking about there, how how good is it as a coach to be able to rely on a captain like Patrick Cripps and the way he's stepped up in the past fortnight? Yeah, and I extend that out to probably a few of the boys. Um, certainly the way Cripper has approached um, the last period of time and, and the entire season, to be fair, um, has been pretty impressive. And um, I reckon, you know, Lee Matthews once said to me, he sort of said, you know, if you get names on the magnet, you don't have to worry about how they turn up. You know, it's just a luxury to have. You know, you don't have to worry about them. You put their name up on the board. You don't have to worry about whether they're prepared or not. They just get themselves ready. They get themselves ready for the physical battle. They get themselves ready for the mental battle. And he does that every single week. And uh, and how he's grown his game across this year is that probably last year, um, teams that went to him and tagged him and, and sort of put some attention to him could probably take a few things off him. They can't do that anymore. Um, so he's developed his game and he's, it's a more rounded game. And then you put the leadership on top of that. So now it's just not about what he brings capacity-wise, it now brings to the intangible things. And um, so I've just been really impressed with the way he's been able to do that. And he's forging a good leadership group. Um, and again, we'll look back on the season at the right time and let's hope we're still alive. But um, there's still obviously another level to go with the team um, that we've still got to get to. You are lucky enough to get through. It's Brisbane at the Gabba. The last two games up there yeah, have, been, well. have been pretty good. Mm. Does that sort of give you a little bit of confidence if you do get there? Oh, it'd be just a good story. <laughs> um, Fags didn't like me. Didn't like talking about um, um, that he was that he was playing against uh, Voss versus Brisbane. So we'll just keep it Carlton versus Brisbane if it works out. I don't mind operating in that hypothetical right now. <laughs> um, it's about the only thing that puts a smile on my face. But um, I hope we're having those conversations. But um, uh, let's just wait and see mentioned um, how Cripps has sort of had that mentality shift. Yeah. Is that sort of a key focus for you next year when you're talking about wanting the team to perform over 23 rounds or is it more changes that you guys might make from a bigger picture or is it a bit of everything? Or? I think we'll take it, mate. I think today's just sort of sitting with today and, and sort of dealing with what the season looks at another time because um, the season is well and truly alive and, you know, from, from my point of view, over the next few hours we get to find out what that actually will look like for us. Um, and if we do, I can tell you what, we'll be, um, we'll be going hard. Um, we'll get ourselves prepared and we'll pick ourselves up and we'll go again and a new season begins. And, you know, we, we've sort of seen many a times where um, teams have been able to sneak their way in through different avenues and been able to do something. Um, so we, we, won't, we won't change off that. Uh, but we won't change how I feel right now. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks.